Do you still have any plans or do you just look from moment to moment what's developing by itself? Yeah, I don't have many plans anymore. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I'm so incredibly busy in every moment that there's no time for making many plans. Mm -hmm. So like right now, I'm, I'm, we have a retreat, which is very nice. And also, um, in the next day or two, we, we're finishing a book, which is going to the printers. So I'm also doing the final proofing of this book. And um, I'm also running the community. Yeah. And running a community means I'm always dealing with some human drama pretty uh -huh. much every day. <laughs> so those three things already keep me pretty busy. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> occasionally we, we have our moments of plans maybe. Uh -huh. So for example, you were asking me about living in Germany. I was recently invited to the south of Spain. And um, I spent, I think it was 10 days in Spain. We had some satsangs, and then I got to know some of the local people, and I got to make some trips. And I was extremely touched by the um, atmosphere of Spain, by the weather, which was so beautiful, and by the fact that there's, there's a history, there's some kind of history in Spain, because the Muslims also came into Spain mm -hmm. in the south. Mm -hmm. And I used to be an architect, so I was also touched by the old architecture and by some of the people I met there. And so at the moment there is the possibility that we'll start a second community in the south of Spain. And uh, the people in our community here would, are very much in favor of that. <laughs> so it may be it will happen with the local people in Spain, or it may happen without the local people in Spain, because there's not so many of those people interested in living in a community. But this community now is very solid. We have several businesses which are running since um, already two years, which bring us an income. Mm -hmm. And so we have also a group of people who've lived together um, and gone through adventures together and survived, mm -hmm. who are ready you know, for some another step. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I quite like the idea of having a, other communities. But you would keep in this community here? We keep this community yeah. and uh, this community would support the beginning of the other community. Mm -hmm. So this community is running, uh, running itself now financially mm -hmm. so that we could in fact give some support to a new community. And then once that community was running I would shift between the two communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that was attractive in the south of Spain was that besides the Spanish people, was that it's a very international community. Mm -hmm. So I met people in the South from many countries, and a lot of those people are really interested in um, knowing themselves. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, there's an attraction to create another place. And also, we would like a bit more sun in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were talking about the uh, uh, international people there, so there is already something going on or there is some center? At the moment in the south of Spain there is a, a satsang group. I don't think they have their own place, but they meet in the house of one of the organizers. And um, I was invited by that, that group to go to the south of Spain. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Nice. And in this way, you were asking me if I had plans. For example, um, very often in my life, there are what you could call coincidences, synchronicities. And so, for example, I remember last year, I, oh no, the year before last, I had been invited to Italy, to Tuscany, for a bit of a holiday. So I had a week's holiday planned. And then on the day that I flew to Italy, there was an email sent from Italy to the office, which I got a few days later, saying that you know, we have a center in Tuscany mm. and we really like to invite Premanand to come to our center. Okay. And this turned out to be only one hour's drive. So of course I went there, we had a satsang, they invited me back and then I you know, had some kind of Italian mm -hmm. adventure, you see. And this year, I've often, in the, I've often thought of going to Africa. Mm -hmm. And this year, at a certain point, we got an email from somebody in um, Cameroon, in the Cameroons. 
and he wanted to invite me to come to the camera rooms. So we started some emailing about the possibility of me going to the camera rooms. And suddenly we got an email out of the blue from 20 guys in the Congo, right, which is next door to the camera rooms, also, you know, wanting to have a connection with me. How do they get to know you? By jetzt, by here and now TV, or...? Um, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's always a mystery because uh -huh. people will say, oh, well, I went on the internet and I was fiddling around and I came across you. How they do that, I don't know. You know? I mean, there are so many teachers mm. that, of course, there's a big choice when you go on the internet. And I suppose some go to those teachers and some go to this teacher and some come to Primanendo. I mean, it gets, you know, it sort of gets worked out uh -huh. by some higher force. Can you say what's special about the people who feel attracted to you? Yeah, I mean, I've often... I remember one time in India, we went out for a birthday dinner to a big restaurant. And so I was sitting there with like 30 people. And on the next table was Carl Rentz sitting with like 20 people. <laughs> and I think... Um, who was it? I think it was Tagagata sitting at another table with his crew. You know, oh. Maybe it was Madaka. And so I was looking at the masters sitting, and I was looking at their students, you know. And I couldn't help noticing that somehow every master attracts a certain kind of people around. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's very... And when you see them all together, yeah. it's very clear, you know, that somehow different kinds of people are attracted to different kinds of masters. I mean, it's natural, really, it's but, natural. but uh, it was very clear. And so then I was looking around at Premnanda's crew, you know, and I was thinking, well, actually, I really like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I really like them. So what I, would, what I would say is that I'm very happy with the people that get attracted to me. <laughs> and that they seem to be um, not so serious. Because okay. sometimes spiritual seekers can be very serious. So I don't get the serious ones. I think they go to Carl. <laughs> Because he's so funny, you know, he's so humorous that he keeps them not being so serious. Uh -huh. So I don't know, what, what, what has been happening in our community is that after the initial couple of years when we were, you know, in a way rubbing off the rough, rough corners, what has developed more and more since we came to this house is a lot of creativity. So there's a lot of music, a lot of singing, dancing. We just finished an art studio, so now people start painting. Um, it feels as if the people who are attracted are really um, creative. Mm. So they're kind of sensitive, mm -hmm. and then out of the sensitivity they have something to express, and it's coming out with many different kinds of creative expression. And so now, Having finished the art studio, we're planning a carpentry uh, studio and a pottery studio and a recording studio. So somehow it's developing by itself into very much of a um, arts and creativity uh -huh. community. Uh -huh. How does the regular day look like when there's not a retreat like now, yeah. but the normal day life? It starts at uh, 7.30 with a, mush, a mad rush out of bed to the meditation. <laughs> so we have from, we have from uh, 7.30 to 8 some kind of um, different kinds of body, uh, maybe like yoga, somatic yoga. Um, they go for a run one morning. We have different kinds of body exercise type of meditation for half an hour mm -hmm. and then from 8 until 8.30 we have silent sitting. So that's how the day starts for everybody and then after that there's breakfast and then from 10 to 1 um, we're supposed to work alone <laughs> so that we continue this meditation through the morning with people working on their main priority with themselves or by themselves. Like for example? Well, somebody might be translating, um, translating something into German from English. Uh, somebody might be doing some construction work. Mm. Somebody might be looking after the animals and birds. Um, they might be uh, clean. We have guest rooms here, so they might be cleaning the guest rooms. They might be preparing for a seminar. They might be taking care of the children. They might be cooking lunch. Um, they might be video editing. I mean, we have many, many things happening mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. 
and so um, in the morning until one that's the the idea that people can stay sort of with themselves so that they can take this energy from the meditation into their day and then we have lunch at one o'clock or 1 30 is lunch time until about 2 30 i think and then in the afternoon from 2 30 till 6 30 we work again and this period is more for meeting together going out of the house um, doing stuff where you need to relate with other people and to see if you can maintain the meditation through also that kind of activity mm -hmm. so that goes on till 6 30 and then at 6 uh, 7 we have a silent dinner so we have a room next to the river a beautiful room next to the river which in fact was our satsang room now it's got a big table and 20 25 people can sit around the table and we serve the food then we um, eat the food in silence so it's uh, another form of meditation but it brings the community together at the end of the day mm -hmm. and then at 7 30 um, on monday and friday we have satsangs in the house on wednesday we have live mantra singing and a darshan from me so three evenings um, i'm available and then on Tuesday evening and Thursday evening, we might invite somebody to talk, we might have a film, um, sometimes there's some theatre happening in the community. Um, occasionally on Saturdays we have um, what we call just dance, which is dancing in a more healthy environment. So it's like a disco, but uh, no alcohol and no smoking. Okay. So that happens once a month. Uh -huh. And everybody who is living here is also working here? Or do people go out in their job somewhere else? And Pe come some back? people go out and work outside mm -hmm. and um, um, some people work inside. I mean, mm -hmm. basically it's, it's shifting. When we first started the community, almost everybody had to go out to work. And in the last time, more and more we have our own businesses and these businesses support the community people so they don't have to go out mm. to work. Some people like to go out to work, like we have one musician who plays in the symphony orchestra, who teaches music, so he likes to go out, and it's somehow it's an important, important aspect for him. So anybody can choose to go out to work for three days a week. So out of the seven days, three, it's okay for people to go out for three days. And the people who work outside, they uh, offer their money for the community and you put all in one pot? Um, the, way, the way at the moment is that, that, we, that everybody contributes every month for their food. They contribute something for satsang and something for the rent of this mm -hmm. big house. And the people that go out to work put some of that money into the pot to cover those things. And the people who live and work in the community get money from the community businesses to put money into the pot. So it, we haven't quite got to a situation where, if you like, everybody, there's one pot. Mm. We haven't quite got to that. In the Christmas time, we do Christmas markets for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And in that six weeks, the extra Christmas market business is all done in one pot. And whether you get to stay home and look after the children or you're the main seller in the market, you get the same income at the end of the six weeks. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we do it in one pot. But the, the daily monies of the community is a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't got to like one pot yet. But what, what we can do now is that there's enough income from our own businesses that for most people they get some part of their monies from the community business even if they're going out to work okay yeah. Yeah. in one of the old interviews you said that you just rearranged the sleeping places to just keep things cooking right. this is the way i understood it right so do you still do these we things still do that, yeah. what was the latest uh, rearrangement that you did well, we, we tend to move people around about every three months. Okay. And sometimes within the three months, people get moved around. Uh -huh. But basically, I'm not really encouraging any idea about mine. So one of the strongest places to get attached is like where you sleep, you know, where you put your clothes, where you put Granny's photo. 
And so by moving people every so often, it, it helps to... Um, it helps people to feel that maybe mind's not so important, you see. I mean, since we've come to live in this house, we've got quite a lot of space, and people live in very nice uh, rooms, actually. I think every room has its own bathroom. Um, we've also developed some new rooms since we've been here. We've constructed, you know, renovated parts of the house up in the roof where we've built new rooms. And uh, we even have special rooms for Enneagram 5s. <laughs> because Enneagram 4, they're quite good at sharing with other people. But we discover that if we want Enneagram 5s to live in our house, we need special accommodation. So we've built little cells for Enneagram 5s to live in. For people who don't know, like me, what is Enneagram 5? Oh, okay. Well, Enneagram 5s, they're, they're people who like to observe the world, you know, they need a lot of, they like a lot of space around. Uh -huh. For them it's quite difficult to be in a community because their natural uh, structures make them want to be alone a lot of the time, to be separated a lot of the time. So these are the natural monks and the natural hermits. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So in one way they like our community, they're kind of attracted to it. And I remember, I think, the longest uh, living in a Grand Five, he lived in a caravan in the garden, you see. So then he felt himself part of the community, and he had his own space in the garden. Oh, yeah. see. So that worked very well. But Enneagram Fives are not very good at you know, sharing mm -hmm. their intimate space. How is, how is the relationship with the the normal village outside of this community? Well, when we lived in the south of Germany, we lived in a small farming village, and the community in fact started on a horse farm, mm. a beautiful old horse farm, where the farmer had lived in the village for 20 years. So naturally he had connections with most of the people in the village. When our community showed up, um, we had the, the idea, which turned out very naive, that we would just invite the whole village to have tea and cake with us. And we'd say, hi guys, you know. Yeah. When we did that, they came a bit like a, a lynch party, you know. They started screaming at us and shouting at us. and mm. They were very upset with us. And Here or No, no, this was in the south. The this south. was in the south of the Black Forest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. On the, in this small farming village. Okay. So then um, they got very upset, they put us on the front page of the local newspapers, they treated our children in a funny way, they got a sect investigator to come and investigate us and then have a big village meeting about us. Luckily he found us not too dangerous, so we didn't get lynched. But it was not very nice actually, oh. it's not very nice. Mm -hmm. So when we came here we had the idea to be as careful as we could mm -hmm. with the local people. Mm -hmm. And so in the, in the three years we've lived here, we've been very careful with noise and parking the cars or anything that might disturb the local people. And I mean, they must know something about us, but we've had no trouble at all. And the feeling is that um, the people are more, they have more space, you know, to accommodate us. So um, we don't have any problem really with the local people. Mm -hmm. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, part of our activities, you know, I was saying about this creativity, uh -huh. one of our, our activities and businesses is an art gallery. Mm -hmm. So in all the main living spaces in the front of the house, we have an art gallery. And right now we have a very nice exhibition. We have many nice exhibitions. And then we put the exhibition opening into the local newspapers and quite a lot of local people come to the art openings okay. and so you know if they're interested to find out what's happening in the house they're welcome on those art opening days to come into the house and people do come and people do come local okay. people do come yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Yeah. i mean it's a very beautiful place here because we're looking out on so much nature mm -hmm. we're looking out on the rhine with the ships passing mm -hmm. And uh, the house itself has got a lot of space. And you may have noticed mm -hmm. that in the courtyard we've got lots of birds and animals. Mm -hmm. yes, nice and this is something that's developing right now. Uh -huh. So we've got plans for bringing other parrots. We've, in fact, 
that got on order two very beautiful parrots, you know, like life blowingly, mind blowingly beautiful parrots, which are at the moment just babies. They're being, at the moment, they're being hand fed by the, yeah. by the person who has them. Yeah. And um, we're getting different animals. In the garden we have at the moment, a, 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 like a whole open area of the garden for rabbits and guinea pigs to run around. Mm-hmm. So I don't quite know how it started. It started actually like about two years ago with somebody talking about having some peacocks. So we had three peacocks. And out of this gradually now we're getting tortoise and some uh, some more birds and um, maybe some uh, goats, a couple of little, mm-hmm. little goats, miniature goats, to go with the rabbits. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>